Welcome, take it up with Jessica Lee. I'm here with Raj Dadatta, who's the CEO and co-founder of Bloomreach. Hi Raj, welcome to the show. Nice to be with you here, Jessica. It was great to have you on the show to talk about e-commerce and the technology that enables the growth of e-commerce and better customer experience. Bloomreach is the leader in commerce experience. Uh, you've got over 700 large global brands using your technology. You're powering over $250 billion in commerce annually. So um, I would say that you are an expert when it comes to technology for e-commerce. Wanted to get your take on some of the trends that you're seeing. I know last year, there's been uh, 15,000 stores that shut down. So on the brick and mortar side, it's been a negative story, but there's been a lot of positive growth in e-commerce. So many stores came online. And so why don't you tell us, what are some of the interesting trends you're seeing and how does your technology help these retailers thrive online? Yeah, well, uh, thanks for asking, uh, Jessica, and indeed, e-commerce is on fire. Uh, you know, what we've seen is over the last year, it went from a nice to have to the only way by which you could sell something online was of course uh, on the computer or on a phone. And so we've just seen an explosion of e-commerce. We've seen almost 80 to 100% growth in e-commerce. We've seen brands popping up all over the place. You can see that with Shopify, you can see that with big commerce and the like. And then we've seen B2B commerce come alive as well, because it's not just serving consumers, it's serving businesses online as well. So when you put it all together, you've got a cauldron of explosion, you have a highly competitive market, and then in, really importantly, it becomes increasingly important to stand out in some specific way. And so, you know, we at Bloomreach in many ways, we have witnessed uh, the first phase of e-commerce, which, which if you think about e-commerce, it's like a 20 year old adolescent at this point. Uh, and so the first 20 years has just been about doing e-commerce, but it's our belief at Bloomreach that the next 20 years is about standing out because why should somebody shop at your store instead of going to Amazon or some other place in order to buy what they're interested in? Only if you give them a highly memorable, highly magical, unique experience. And we at Bloomreach are here to make that possible. Yeah, I shop online all the time and I find it very frustrating if I'm trying to look for something. And the recommendation engine is recommending things that are not really exactly what I'm looking for. It's very right. frustrating. I'm spending so much time just searching, searching that um, I will abandon the whole site if it's not done right. Well, and you're not alone in, in, in doing that. What we see is that, you know, the people who search and browse by then you've already made a decision that you're interested in buying some. So that's like the worst case because they've nurtured you as a customer of that brand. They've gotten you to come to their website. You're ready to buy something and then they disappoint you. And yeah. so that is the worst. Um, and so we have an entire product line we call Discovery, which is very much about uh, world-class search, world-class recommendations, exactly to enable retailers and brands to offer highly compelling ways by which you know folks like you can go find a product, which it turns out is a lot harder than one might think. You're sort of reading the mind of the customer in giving them a recommendation or in giving them uh, the right result. Yeah, I think recommendation engine has been around for a long time. You know, I, I remember uh, Netflix started out recommending movies to watch and now shopping online, you have to recommend the right solution at the right time to accelerate that purchasing. Otherwise, I'm going to be shopping, comparing other products on other sites, you know, and I think having the right technology to take in all that massive amount of data. There's so much data out there. There is. But if the systems are in silo, it's not really comprehensive and, and seamless, then you're missing out. That, that's right. And, and so, you know, a lot of how we have assembled the Bloomreach platform is centered on looking at it from a consumer perspective when you're shopping online. So what, how does a brand first engage with you? Well, the first way they engage with you is typically through marketing. That might be they send you an email, then you might see an ad, you might see them on Facebook, you might receive an SMS. Uh, and so the first part of our platform is very much about personalized marketing. So when they reach out to you, they're reaching out to you in a way that speaks to you very deeply. The second part is, all right, they've marketed to you, you've clicked through on the message, you arrive on the website. Now they need to inspire you to buy. Perhaps you're interested in buying a sofa set and it, you, know, you wanna be able to envision how that sofa set fits in in your living room, what upholstery, what make. And so, Part of that is 
great content, videos, articles, all kinds of things that in inspire you and educate you around the products that they're making available. And then the third part of, of our platform is discovery, which is they've marketed to you, they've inspired you to buy. Now let's offer a great search experience, a great recommendation experience, so you can find exactly what you're looking for super fast. Those three parts, when you put it together, we believe are the cornerstones of an incredible customer experience that really raises the bar on, on, on how somebody shops online. You made an acquisition recently of Exponi. I think that just makes your platform a lot more comprehensive and powerful. Tell us how does that benefit the full journey? Yeah, so Exponia actually gives us that first marketing piece. So prior to Exponia, we were focused on once you arrive on the website, helping you find the right product. But getting you to the website in the first place was something we didn't do prior to Exponia. And so now we're able to tie in the marketing with the experience once you're on the e-commerce property and bring that together. That, that's one thing that Exponia gives us. It also gives us something else that's, that's uh, very powerful, which is you mentioned data. And data has been at the root of Bloomreach for a long time. And now with Exponia plus Bloomreach, if, you, if, if we think about the data that we have access to, Exponia gives us very deep data on customers. It helps us understand who you are, what your preferences are, what campaign you participated in, where you're located, what you bought previously. So we can deeply understand customers. And Bloomreach has always had a data set about products. So we know every product in the world. We know if it's sofas, what, what a three-piece means or a two-piece sofa or sectionals or upholstery or all the things that go into sofas and every other product category. And if you just step back and you think about what e-commerce is, it's putting the right product in front of the right person. And so these two data sets come together with AI technology to spit out the perfect search result, the perfect recommendation, the perfect marketing, or the perfect piece of content. You've got an exciting event coming up uh, soon, actually, May 26, 27, uh, to talk about the best practices in e-commerce. Talk to us about that. Well, Jessica, it's going to be awesome. It's on, as you said, it's on the 26th and 27th of May. It's all online. It's called uh, the Commerce Experience Summit 2021, 2021 version being all online. And it's, uh, it's brought to you by us at Bloomreach, by Forrester Research, by Google Cloud, and by Gorilla, which is a Wonderman Thompson company. Excellent. So the website to register, uh, right at bloomreach.com. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Now, you wrote this book recently called The Digital Seeker. So um, I'm going to hold it up here. And this is very interesting because you have a lot of great examples in here to show the winners and how they apply the strategy of superior service experience and also the technology that enables that, right? And also the product-led thinking. So let's start off with my first question has to do with separating what you call it a seeker versus a customer. So explain to us that, what is, what is the difference here? You know, um, I wrote the book in many ways because having worked with 700 of the largest brands empowering 25% of e-commerce, people would ask me, what defines the winners? Why do the winners win? And why do the losers lose? And after a lot of research, what became very clear to me is that the winners build for the seeker, and many of the losers are still stuck in an old world customer-centric view of the world. So what does that really mean? What that means is to make it very personal. If, if, if I'm going out and I'm organizing a vacation for my family, then I'm just a seeker of a memorable vacation. But I'm going to decompose that into a set of online to-dos. I'm going to buy an airline ticket, maybe car rental, pick a hotel, figure out the excursion. Yeah. So I'm actually a customer of the car rental company, a customer of the, of the plane, uh, of the flight, a customer of the hotel. So I'm a customer of 10 different things, but I'm a seeker of a memorable vacation. Mm -hmm. So the transactional e-commerce properties will say, oh, we'll just make car rentals easy. We'll make flights really easy. We'll make uh, excursions really easy. But then they miss the underlying motivation of what that person is really seeking, which is a memorable vacation. Yes. <laughs> If you build for, if you build a digital experiences for the seeker, for the underlying motivation, then all of a sudden you win their hearts, not just their minds and their wallets, and they stay with you forever. And we see that in industry after industry. If, if I were to take someone like in fashion, if you take someone like Stitch Fix, that is really your personal stylist, they know that you're seeking to represent your style in what you wear. You're not just seeking the fabric. Right. So they get that and they build that for you. 
If, uh, if we take a Bloomreach uh, client, the National Health Service in the UK, they built this great application that, I, that, that they call a symptom checker, which is when you're at home and it's the middle of the night and your child is sick, you can pull up their app, put in the symptoms, and it will just tell you, this is what we think it is before you even get to the doctor. Mm -hmm. Because they know you're just seeking comfort as a parent to know that, it, should I go to the emergency room or just give an Advil and, or a Tylenol and hope that my child recovers by the next day? So they're really going to the underlying motivations. And I've seen this among Silicon Valley companies. So if you take somebody like, uh, like an Uber, Uber is, they know that the person isn't just seeking a better, is not just a customer of a taxi service. They know that really what they're seeking is to predictably get from point A to point B. So they add up payments and mapping and rides and on-demand source, and they build a digital experience that's highly unique. Now it's very difficult to compete with Uber. Yeah, and I think that all of these great uh, digital e-commerce companies are just setting the bars higher and higher. That's and right. I love how in your book, you talk about the different examples, but you also gave um, steps of how do you achieve superior customer experience. One of the ways is actually having the right platform to support your business, right? That's right. That's right. Yes. You know, I think once once you say, I'm going to build for the secret, then the question is how? And you've really got to assemble lots of different pieces. Uber would have to have figured out payments and mapping and on-demand service and drivers. The same thing would be true if you're in e-commerce and you're selling sofas, but you want to envision 3D and all kinds of things. So you've got to build that experience on a platform. If you start to buy a whole bunch of individual point solutions, it'll never come together to deliver that delightful experience. In many ways, it's about turning every business into a digital business and a tech first company. And it's really harnessing what, what I call the three A's, which is ambient technology, sensors, mobile devices to collect data about what consumers are looking for, AI to make sense of all of it and figure out what to recommend, and then APIs to connect to multiple systems so that, so that uh, you democratize that information across multiple touch points. And so really the technology platform is key to uh, delivering on that, on that experience. Tell me how many customers you have now uh, using Bloomreach, it's pretty big. Yeah, right? so we have over, I think 750 brands, some of the largest in the world, the, the folks like uh, The Gap and William Sonoma and Fossil and, uh, and you know, so many, so many other smaller, smaller upstart brands like BrewDog or or Olokai that makes sand, the sandal. So some of the industry leaders, the biggest companies in the world, but also some of the upstarts that are growing really fast. And they what you know they almost think of Bloomreach as growth fuel, you know, ways by which they can pour fuel to explode. The third thing that you mentioned in here that I want to ask you is about product-led teams that yeah. will fuel growth for these e-commerce sites. Yeah, so historically, when I used to talk to retailers before, they would say, I have a digital team over here, but you know, then I have my marketing, my sales, my, my design, my merchandising, and then they're off to the side. But increasingly, what we've seen is when digital has gone from the sideshow to the main event, now all of a sudden you have to have a full digital team that is working around the product. And that means more than just engineering and IT. That means de designers. That means merchandisers, digital merchandisers. That means digital marketers. That means uh, you know, um, product managers, all kinds of folks who own the digital experience. Historically, the old, the old way of thinking about it is, hey, let's say I'm in the sofa business. Well, then my, my team builds sofas and my marketing team markets the sofas online. That's yes. the old way. That's the right. New, the new way is, no, the online experience is a part of my product. The same way I think of my sofas as the product, I think of the website mobile apps as a part of the product. Oh. And so therefore, the product-centric digital team owns soup to nuts, everything from the creation of the sofa to the experience with the sofa online to ultimately post-sale how I might interact with it. I, I think a great example of this, by the way, is somebody like a Peloton. If you think about Peloton, they don't say that the exercise bike is my product. They say the exercise bike, the online classes, the instructors, the subscription, it all is the product. The community also. The community as well, exactly. So that whole thing is the product, which means organizationally, I have to organize around the whole product, not just think of the product over here and online marketing over there. Right, right. So it sounds like 
the experience is the product. So CX equals product. Exactly. Experience is the product. Experience is built for the seeker and it's built on a digital experience platform. Well, I'm looking forward to finishing this book. I got it yesterday and just browsed to it. So um, recommend people to take a look at the Digital Seeker written by Raj Didata. Awesome. Well, it, it's, a, it's intended to be a fun read, but also a great collection of practical stories of the winners and a playbook on how to win big in digital and e-commerce. All right. So let's talk about the future then. What, what are you forecasting as the trends and then making sure that you're aligning your solutions to address the demand? Well, look, I mean, you know, the, the biggest thing we're seeing is just rapid acceleration. So, I, you know, in the book, I call it the R naught, which is sort of the rate at which e-commerce adoption is happening is exponentially growing. So what, what we used to do in a year, we do in a month, what we used to do in a month, we now do in a week. Everything is a lot faster than, yes. than ever before. And so, you know, that's the way consumers are operating. That's their expectation, you know, all around. And so our view at Bloomreach is that if you believe in the seeker-centric vision of how it's going to be, then stitching together that customer experience and making it really easy for marketers and merchandisers to enable great customer experiences is the mission that we have. And that in turn will create great consumer experiences on the other side. And that's going to be interspersed in all of our life. We're going to find that in the clothing we buy containing sensors, in the mobile apps speaking with the store rep, in uh, the way in which post-sale they communicate with us and recommend complementary products based on our style. And it's going to almost feel like the digital brand knows my wants and needs before even I want. I know what I want. Uh, and that's the future that, that we think we're headed towards and building towards. Yeah, I think the experience is uh, beyond just the shopping online. It includes, like you're saying, when you have that customer service rep that you're interacting with. It includes the return experience when you want to exchange products, right? It's, it's, it's the community of once you become a user of a product. That's so right. um, it is a lot more. And I think those who look at experience, that's a lot more than just buying a product online and working in a whole ecosystem of the journey before you buy it, when you buy it, and then as a user adopting it, right? It's, it's a full journey. It's the full, it's the full journey. And that's what creates loyalty in the end in this very crowded world where I can switch between brands and experiences so quickly. Loyalty comes from full journey, full cycle uh, adoption uh, in many ways. And we're seeing, you know, some of the, some of the best companies around and not, and what interestingly, not all the leaders, you know, are Silicon Valley startups. There's lots of great examples that I find across the world of people embracing this seeker-centric idea and then building these digital experiences in highly unique ways using, using technology of this sort. Well, it's been a great conversation, Raj. Thank you for being on the show to talk about e-commerce and uh, your philosophy and your recommendation in how to win in the digital world. Um, so recommend your book, The Digital Seeker. So thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks, thanks, Jessica, appreciate it. There you have it. Take it up with Jessica Lee, Raj Dadata, who's the CEO of Bloomreach and the author of The Digital Seeker.